Hello everyone, welcome back. The topic is rest and rest seats from removal partial benches. Now I've already covered about the direct retainers and the major connectors from removal partial benches. Now moving on towards the next component of it, that is the rest and the rest seats. Bonneville was the first to introduce and recommend the use of the rest in the RPD in the year 1899. So he was the first person to use rest in a RPD. So what is rest? So rest is defined as it is a rigid or a stabilizing extension of a fixed or a removal partial denture. So it is a extension of a removal partial denture. It is a rigid extension of a removal partial denture which contacts a remaining tooth or teeth. So it is contacting. So this is the component of RPD that contacts the remaining tooth or teeth to dissipate the vertical or the horizontal forces. So to distribute the forces which are acting on your processes. So it helps to distribute that forces and this is known as rest. Now what is rest seat? So rest seat it is defined as that portion of the natural tooth or a cast restoration of a tooth which is selected or prepared to receive a occlusal, incisal, lingual, internal or a semi precession rest. So now this is a rest as I have said. This is the rest. It is a component of RPD. And we have seen it contacts a remaining tooth. So rest seat is the preparation on the contact tooth so that your rest it sits on this tooth and this is nothing but a rest seat. So the rest it gets that seat on the natural tooth which is present that is your abutment tooth. So the relationship between a rest and a rest seat it must be such that the forces which are transmitted from the processes they are directed apically down the long axis of the tooth. So now the relationship of this rest and the rest seat it must be such that the forces which are transmitted from the processes so the forces which are transmitted from the processes to the abutment they are directed apically down the long axis of the tooth. In such manner, the stress it can be absorbed by the fibers of the periodontal ligament without damaging the ligaments or the supporting bone. So this is the point that you have to remember that the relationship of this rest and the rest seat, it should be such that the forces are transmitted apically down the long axis of the tooth. Now what are the general considerations? So the rest, it acts as a vertical stop. So as we have seen the diagram, so it acts as a vertical stop to prevent the injury to the soft tissue and it helps to hold the class assembly in position. Then there should be slight movement within the rest seat to dissipate the horizontal forces. So this is, this is like there should be a slight movement within the rest. Then the rest, it should not be placed on the inclined tooth surface. So this is your inclined tooth surface. So it should not be placed on inclined tooth surface. Then the anterior rest, it should be as close to the center of the tooth as possible. If you are preparing the rest on the anterior tooth, so it should be as close as possible to the center of the tooth. Then the rest, it should be placed on the proximal surfaces of all the teeth adjacent to the edentulous space. So the rest, they are prepared on the, basically the rest seat, they are prepared on the proximal surface of the all teeth, which are adjacent to the edentulous space. Then they are rounded in all the aspect. There are no sharp lines which should be present in the rest. Then there should be minimal preparation in the dentine or else it will cause sensitivity as you're preparing the rest seat on the natural present tooth. So there should be minimal preparation of it on the dentine. Then the center, it should be deeper than the surrounding rest surface. So this is the center. So your center of the rest, it should be deeper than the surrounding rest surface. Now what are the functions of it? First is the support. So this is the main function. It resists the displacement. Next is it maintains the component in their planned position and it prevents the spreading of the clasp arm. The next function is it distributes the occlusal load. Then it may provide indirect retention. So indirect retention is nothing but it counteracts the function of your direct retainers. Then the next function is it direct the forces it directs the foot away from the tooth contact and the embrasure areas. So it directs the foot away from the embrasure and the contact tooth contact areas. So when the teeth are extracted or they are drifted apart, the food it will accumulate if the teeth are extracted. So the food it will accumulate in that area. But the presence of this rest it closes that space and it prevents the foot entrapment. The next function is it improves the existing occlusion. 
so it maintains the relationship between the natural and the artificial teeth it prevents the extrusion of the abutments as we are preparing this rest seats on the abutment and then this is the component the rest they are the component that contacts the abutment so it prevents the extrusion of your abutment it provides a reference for the reliance or impression and the last function is it direct the forces along the long axis of the abutment now what is the classification of the rest so based on the relation of the rest to the direct retainer so if a rest is a part of a retentive class assembly it is known as a primary rest and if the rest that is responsible for additional support or indirect retention so it is called as auxiliary rest or the secondary rest so over here these are your primary so over here these are the primary rest and these are the secondary rest that provides the indirect retention and the ones which provides the direct retention or it is a part of a retentive class it is known as the primary rest then based on the location of the rest it is occlusal lingual or cingulum or the third one is the incisal occlusal so named because they are seated on the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth the lingual those which are seated on the lingual surfaces of the anterior teeth usually they are the maxillary canine and the incisal rest those they are seated on the incisal edges so the name says where the rest seats are prepared so moving on towards the first one that is the occlusal rest and the rest seat so there are various types of occlusal rests that are box shaped extended only interproximal embrasures or internal so the partial dentures without occlusal rest is called as gum stripper the outline form of this occlusal rest is so they are of a shape rounded triangular with the base which is resting on the marginal ridge so this is a rounded triangular shape and the base of this triangle is towards the marginal ridge and the apex it is towards the center so we as you can see this center so the apex of this is towards the center and the base of this triangle is towards the marginal ridge then it should follow the outline of the mesial or the distal marginal ridge and the triangular fossa so your occlusal rest it should follow the outline of the mesial or the distal marginal ridge then the dimensions of it are it is half the buccal lingual width from cusp tip to the cusp tip so it is basically half the buccal lingual width so the buccal and the lingual so it is half of it then one third to half the mesio distal width so it is mesio distally it is one third to one half then is as long as it is wide and it should be at least zero 2.5 mm for both molars and premolars so it should be at least 2.5 mm then the reduction of the marginal ridge of approximately 1.5 mm is usually necessary so basically there is reduction of 1.5 mm which is usually required at the marginal ridges the floor of the occlusal rest seat it should be apical to the marginal ridge and the occlusal surface now the floor of your rest seat it should be apical to the marginal ridge and the occlusal surface then it can be concave or it is spoon shaped for distal extension for example if it is a distal extension case that is your kennedy's class 1 or class 2 in that you are doing a box shape so basically it's like for distal extension it is concave or spoon shaped and for tooth supported it is a box shape then the rest seats they are not prepared opposing the functional cusp then a, in a tooth bone cases the rest it must be extended to the center of the teeth then the minimal metal thickness is 0.5 mm at the thinnest point and it is 1 to 1.5 mm at the marginal ridge the proximo occlusal line angle of the preparation it should not be sharp and hence it is always rounded then what are the requirements of it it should be rounded triangular as i have said the marginal ridge is lowered approximately 1.5 mm the angle between the minor connector and the rest it should be less than 90 degree so this is the angle which should be less than 90 degree so that to prevent the slippage of the prosthesis and to direct the forces along the long axis then the rest seat may be prepared in either saucer shaped or a box shaped saucer spoon used which is more than box in cases of free end saddle or a bounded cases which are having weak apartments then the rest seats they are prepared in the south sound enamel or in the crowns and inlay 
then there is application of fluoride gel which is applied to the apartment when you're preparing a rest seat the rest seat on the amalgam it can be used as a interim or the temporary partial denture then the cast gold restoration on the abutment it can be used to prepare the rest seat for the permanent restorations and this is all about the occlusal rest seat the next one is the lingual or the cingulum rest and the rest seat the anterior teeth it may be used to support an indirect retainer or the auxiliary rest so the anterior teeth is used to support an indirect retainer or a auxiliary rest the canine it is preferred over an incisor as the indirect retainer or a auxiliary rest so basically you are using canine so basically canines they are more preferred over the incisor the normal morphology it requires minimal tooth preparation so when a canine is not present multiple rests that are spread over the several incisor teeth are preferred so if the canine they are absent so instead of using one incisor you are preparing the rest seat over several incisors why it is preferred over a incisal because it is placed nearer the horizontal axis of rotation of the apartment and because of that there is less tendency to tip the tooth it is more aesthetically acceptable a lingual rest it may sometimes be placed in an enamel seat at the cingulum or just incisal to the cingulum then the lingual rest seat the preparation in the enamel they are rarely satisfactory on the mandibular anterior teeth because of its lack of thickness of the enamel in which to prepare a seat of adequate so these are the reasons why you are preferring a canine over a incisor then the outline form it is a slightly rounded v shaped that is half moon shaped is prepared on the lingual surface at the junction of the gingival and the middle one third of the tooth so it is prepared at the junction of the gingival and the middle third and the shape is a half moon shape the v shaped notch has two inclines now as we have seen this is a v shaped notch so you are preparing a v shaped notch on the lingual side so it has two inclines that is this labial and lingual and they meet at the apex so these two link inclines they are meeting at the apex so the labial incline it is parallel to the labial surface so this labial it is parallel to the labial surface and the lingual incline it runs perpendicular to the labial incline the apex of the v it is directed incisally the floor of the rest seat it should be toward the cingulum rather than the axial wall so your floor it is towards the cingulum area care must be taken not to create an enamel undercut which interferes with the placement of the denture so you should take proper care that you are not creating a enamel undercut the preparation it is broadest at the lingual aspect what are the dimensions of it so mesiodistal is 2.52 3 mm so this is mesiodistally it is 2.5 to 3 mm then labiolingually it is 2 mm and incisal gingivally it is 1.5 mm so these are the dimensions that you have to learn properly because this can be asked as an mcq tool so these dimensions of all the rest seats or rest they can asked they can be asked as an mcqs or even in your wipas the last one is the incisal rest and the rest seat so it is less desirable and it is more unfavorable so the rest they are prepared on the prepared rest seats at the incisal angles of the anterior teeth so you are preparing the rest seats on the incisal angle of your anterior teeth they are used predominantly as a auxiliary rest or as indirect retainers so they are not usually preferred as a primary retainers primary rest they are used as auxiliary rest and they help in indirect retention so they may be used on the canine abutment in either arch but more commonly they are used on the mandibular canine mostly they are avoided on the maxillary due to aesthetics so they are used mostly on the mandibular because it will hamper the aesthetic if they are prepared on the maxillary anterior then it provides definite support relatively less loss of the tooth structure and little display of the metal this is the advantage of incisal the outline form is it is like a small v shaped rounded notch so here as you can see this is a small v shaped rounded notch it is prepared at the incisal angle of a canine or a incisal edge of the incisor with the deepest portion of the preparation which is apical to the incisal edge so the deepest portion is apical to the incisal edge the dimensions of it is 2.5 mm wide so it is 
2.5 mm wide and it is 1.5 mm deep. So length is around 1.5 mm and the width is 2.5 mm. The floor of the rest seat, it is extended slightly onto the labial aspect of the toe. The incisal rest, it is placed either at the meso incisal or the disto incisal angle. So they are placed at the meso incisal or the disto incisal angle. It can be incorporated into a lingual plate for a additional stabilization. So basically they can be incorporated. So this incisal rest, it can be incorporated into a lingual plate. Then multiple incisal rest, they can be placed for the additional support. So this is the multiple incisal rest, which are placed for additional support. And this was all about rest and rest rates. And these are the references that I have used for preparation of this notes. Thank you so much. And if you have any doubt, then do let me know and do subscribe to my channel.